and we are rolling! That's the only intro that you ever need, by the way. Just a power chord, just like that. Power chord, put the fourth below, give it a good bit of boost. Jobs are good and done. Um, <laughs> it's Thomas, back with a live video, no edits, so <laughs> bear with me. Today I'm going to show you how I set up MIDI with the Polychrome DSP McRocklin suite, and I'm going to show you how you could possibly set it up with your gear, with your MIDI controller. If you're looking at this video and already you're like, what the hell is he talking about? Uh, many of our users Many of our users have devices such as this. Uh, this is the uh, the Blackstar Live Logic. Uh, in fact, um, our very own uh, live production skills. Here we go. Um, Smart Alec. Look at that. Smart Alec. We can stack them up on top of each other, make it a trio of Live Logics. Um, he just went to town uh, recently, and you can see that he has a couple of the Mission uh, Expression pedals as well as two of these guys, and he has different things like presets and drive pedals and all sorts. He's, he's taking it even more serious than I am. But anyway, I am, pretty, I'm, I am pretty serious about MIDI controllers. So I do have a camera on my pedal board. Sorry, Alec, uh, your picture, gotta go. Um, so I use a couple of the Morningstar MC8s now, and I, I really like them. Very, very programmable, but in all honesty, I just use them mostly for presets preset switching. So if I push a button here, it kind of goes through my presets. In fact, why don't I show you how I use my MIDI mappings first, and then I'll show you how you can set it up, uh, and I'll show you how you can set it up also in another door, like uh, Logic, for example. So I actually have two um, MC8s. The one on the right does more Ableton live control. So if I do anything like with a looper, for example, or any global things where I turn all the bass off or whatever, I use the one on the right for that. But most of the time during a live stream, it's the left one that does all of the, the tone switching. So I have basically, I have four banks. Oh, that, that's how I have it. So I have a bank down and a bank up button and the remaining six buttons is uh, just for tones. So the first bank is all very dry tones. So starting off here, gain one, gain two, which is a little bit smoother. I really, really like that one. That's called a filthy riff machine. Very, very cool. And then I have a, a tone that uses um, the synth oct, really, really cool synth, synth oct sort of octave of sound, very cool. A dry, sparkly, clean tone, if you want to know what that sound is, it's big AC. Uh, the next button takes me to a bit of a sort of, um, it's my type of clean, very, um, very exciting, very hyper sounding, you know, you can really go to town. Just really, really fun. I like those type of cleans a lot. And then I have a little bit more of a traditional clean uh, as my sort of third clean on that bank. And then I have what's called um, a default bank. And this is where I have my regular gain sort of solos, you know, everyday kind of sounds that I use a lot. So starting off with um, Let It Rip Son. This is my new probably go-to lead sound. <laughs> Well, it's just really, it's just got so much feel and it just sits really well in a track when I'm jamming on a live stream or something like that. And then I have Liquid Lead 2, which is more of a lead, smoothed lead sound. And then what do I have on 3? My life is, sh is shred. <laughs> That's got a broader mid, you know, really, really fun. It kind of reminds me like early 90s shred tone. So with those three gain sounds, I've got good coverage. So just so you guys can screenshot and use all those sounds, let me show you one more time. So gain one, let it rip sun, gain two, liquid lead, gain three. And this changes quite a lot. And that's the fun thing about having a MIDI controller and the, the McLaughlin suite is 
you can just keep changing your favorite tones. And when you're playing, you get different ideas. I, I get really inspired by tones. You know, I sit and just ideas like suddenly come, like I, I'll, there's a really good example of it. Um, there's a preset called something mids. And every time I play with that tone recently, it's one of, one of the latest presets from the 1.5 update. Every time I play with that um, preset, it's just so, it just gets my creative juices going. I'll, I'll, I'll show you that preset when we get to it in the, the um, I think it's in the low gain sort of stuff. It's really, really, really cool. Um, so just continuing through, so I've got three gain sounds, um, cleans, starting off very sparkly with the acoustic. With the white limo preset, very, very cool. And then this is kind of my default, um, Clean, I guess. The clean man's clean. Move the screen over this side so you can see a bit more here. Very cool. And then um, I think I have a pop, yeah, pop chords preset. So that's what I have on my default bank. If I push to the next bank, I have what's called special. <laughs> I don't know exactly what's special, but I guess these are more of the far out sort of sounds, I guess. That's the, uh, the red leather lead preset. Next I have... Ooh, that is nice. That's the, the deep love solo preset. Very broad mid, cuts through a mix really well without being too kind of piercing and stuff like that. And then... Afterglow 3, you know, everybody loves Afterglow. Great presets. Picking Grandmaster, this. If you like playing, um, uh, using techniques like hybrid picking and stuff like that. Picking Grandmaster is incredible. It just makes your life as a guitar player so much easier. Definitely use that preset. And then on the sixth. That is what I have as my sixth tone on the special bank. And then to my final bank, I have low gain stuff. So starting off with uh, Maxwell 2. Really, really cool. Next, our mid-gain superstar. So this is the preset that I was talking about a little bit earlier. The feel of this preset, oh man, it's using the edge amp with, um, I think it's got a drive pedal. Oh, two drive pedals on the edge amp. It's a great preset. It's one of the newer presets. Really, really just lovely to play. And then, using the gain, but with very, very low gain. So it's, uh, it's kind of like a, almost into the clean sort of territory. Really cool. And then finally, I have a couple of uh, more strip back sort of tones on my, on my low gain back here. Feel. That's really cool. And then burnout. Lots of fun. So that's basically all of the presets that I use for a live stream. If I if I'm jamming for like two and a half, three hours and just going off on one, that's all of the presets and all the coverage that I need. But let's take a look inside of Ableton and I'll show you what I'm doing to set that up. It's actually really, really simple. So jumping over to Ableton here. Um, oh, by the way, look at that 1.51. Whew. Um, this is a lovely little update. I think you're going to really, really like that one. Sorry, this one. It's um, for me and a lot of our beta testers, it's giving a noticeable performance upgrade. Uh, for me, it, it gave me like um, about five or six percent performance boost. So I don't know how 
the genius Luca managed to pull this little uh, performance boost off, but uh, I tell you what, it's, it's incredible because it's even less CPU, uh, well, it's not even CPU intensive, it's like even more efficient. That's what I should say, even more efficient. It's a really, really cool update. There's some other minor improvements and tweaks and stuff as well, but that one was, was like when I loaded my default uh, live stream setup and I saw my CPU just go from like that to like that, I'm like, oh, huh, bonus, bonus. Very cool, very cool, um, yeah. Some of you will be watching this and be really wishing this was a highly edited video, and I'm sorry, okay? You know, it's a, it's a one-take video, so <laughs> it is what it is. All right, so this is my guitar group. This is Ableton Live, okay? So when I have a guitar group, basically I have my guitar, which is this here. And that's how my guitar sounds with the McRocklin Suite turned off. And if I edit the plugin, that's what it brings up. And then I have an MCA MIDI channel and a WAH MIDI channel. Now, to be honest, there was no real reason why I separated, the, separated these onto two MIDI tracks. Um, I was just trying different things out and if you get to the point where you're trying different things and one thing works, it's like, well, why go back to putting it all onto one MIDI channel? At the end of the day, you could have I don't know, like 16 separate MIDI controllers all on different channels doing different things with a plugin. It's completely up to you. Or you could just treat it like just have one MIDI channel for everything and don't even think about that stuff, you know. But, uh, you know, I've, I've had different times with my setup where I've been so OCD and, you know, I'm like, okay, I'll separate this onto MIDI channel too. There's no right or wrong. It's just whatever works for you, really. Um, so, um, this, oh, my batteries are charged. Always a good sign. Uh, this record is just for recording. That's my mic channel. And if I want to put some beats on, I just drag them onto that channel. So this is a pretty, pretty simple setup. Um, so on the wah, -wah uh, basically I have that going on MIDI channel five. And if I bring up the plugin and show you the MIDI settings, by the way, you just click on the Polychrome logo there and go to MIDI map and that will show you all the stuff that you've assigned. Now, essentially, there's kind of like two ways you could go about setting up your MIDI. One is you could simply right click on whatever you want to MIDI assign and say MIDI learn and then click on a device and go, oh, okay, there we go, lovely, that's assigned. Um, I don't often do that and the reason is, is um, I'm gonna undo that, get rid of that is um, I guess for that control, you know, like uh, I had quite a hefty amount of MIDI setups going in my previous rig before I started to use this McRocklin suite for all of my tones. So I had a lot of kind of mapping already done, just going to like tons and tons and tons of other plugins. So it was just a case of going like, delete that plugin, delete that plugin, delete that, delete, like delete all these plugins and just map the parameters that I'd already made in the Morningstar editor to go to the new stuff in a single plugin. So, you know, it could be done either way in terms of you could come in here and say, well, I know my button number two is on CC, whatever, MIDI channel, whatever, and you could you could just do it that way, and that's exactly what I have done here. I know a lot of you have um, talked about the CC Engage on the Wawa. Um, if you're just looking at this plugin for the first time, what that does is um, you can see CC Engage, and I have that set to the Wawa. And what that means is, like, let's say I'm on a lead tone here. Liquid lead. Uh, it would be very good if I showed you the wah. And if I start using my wah, wow! It basically has a, a sort of delayed turn off when I go to the heel position. Because what you don't want to do is like do wah wah, and then every time you get to the heel back, it's like disengaging the wah, you know? That's, that's not fun. And if you have like an original crybaby, you have to put some weight on it. Or if you use like a, a Dunlop 95Q, it has about 350 millisecond delay off pause for that reason. Um, but we've just taken that one step further and just given you the option of changing that speed to whatever you like. So for example, if I put that to like 800 milliseconds, now when I get 
to the uh, heel back position or the wah here, it takes that split second to turn off. And that's great if you do like funky stuff and you're like, and you don't want to keep turning the wah off. For me, about 400 milliseconds works well. I can use it for like shredding lead stuff and all of that and it works very, very well. So this is Ableton. This is my preferred door. I love Ableton. I didn't always love Ableton, but on my third or fourth attempt at using Ableton, everything clicked together and I was like, that's amazing. I'm never using at that previous, the previous door I was using like Cubase, Nuendo, Pro Tools for a bit, I had a stint on Logic, but once I clicked with Ableton, that was it. It was just like, ah, oh, that's better. Everything is just faster, cleaner, easier, you know? If you're used to using Logic, then, you know, there's, there's this kind of like awkward changeover period, but I love Ableton. It's really, really great. Um, but for you guys that are maybe using another door, uh, let me load up Logic here and... Um, do I have it here? I, oh yeah, there we go. So let me show you what Logic would look like. So I just changed my screen share to Logic and open up the, the McRockland suite here. Let me just turn off the um, audio track in Ableton just in case I start kicking off. So it's very much the same kind of deal. You could just right click and say, hey, MIDI learn please, click on a button and oh, what happened? Oh, got to turn the plugin on. <laughs> I thought that was going to be one of those like live video fails where we just have to go right back to the beginning because we ain't editing this. It's one shot. <laughs> but um, yeah, Logic's a bit weird like that. It needs to have the plugins turned on. So yeah, you know, you could you could just do that. Um, that's totally fine. Or you could do as I did in terms of MIDI mapping it. But before we get to that. <sighs> Uh, it is a little bit weird in, in the sense that what we have here is effectively an instrument, sort of MIDI track, if you like. And then you'll notice on the top right here, I have an audio input from my input number one on my audio interface. So that feels, I don't know, it just feels like logic is just not that well thought out in terms of like a modern workflow. I know the kind of... They, they take a lot of inspiration from Ableton in terms of like the way that you can now edit and, and logic. And they keep trying to like, oh, go, oh, that looks good. Let's incorporate that. But I don't know that that just, and it's not just a polychrome thing. This is any plugin that has audio and MIDI. This is the way that you do it. And I don't know, for me, it feels a little bit kind of like icky. Icky is the word. Uh, so once you have a MIDI instrument track, you choose your sidechain input for your guitar, and then we can do our MIDI setup. So again, if I wanted to have uh, the same sort of set of settings as I was using uh, inside of uh, Logic, sorry, Ableton, getting doors confused here, then we should be able to just literally go back and forwards. I don't know what bank I set, just a few parameters up there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I only set a few there, but you know, it just works in exactly the same way. And you could just go about your business, filling all those up with whatever functionality uh, that you like. But I guess the, 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 the initial starting point is just to make sure that you have that MIDI instrument sort of track with your audio set for your actual guitar input. And for me, that's guitar input number one. Um, Personally, I, I much prefer Ableton's approach to this. I think it works you know, really, really well. Um, but you know, if you have any questions about this, there's been lots of discussions on my uh, Discord, which is, uh, we got we got a one, we got, we got it right here. Poly oh no, that's that's not it. Live fail, uh, mcrockner.com forward slash Discord. So I'm there all the time. Uh, moderators from the team are there. But if you wanna get really, really just into the nitty gritty of Polychrome, you know, head over to the Polychrome Discord, polychromedsp.com forward slash Discord. That'll take you to there. I'll just join both. You know, I'm there, the guys are there. It's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, there we go. That That is kind of like my MIDI overview. <laughs> Isn't it just 
works, you know, really, really well. If you, if you like jamming to music and stuff like that, I would highly recommend just picking up some kind of MIDI controller. Like I said, it doesn't need to be the most expensive one. Uh, there's various ways, like you can get Bluetooth uh, MIDI controllers. Uh, the USB stuff, for me, you know, I, I like stuff that is always, that's just not gonna run out of batteries, basically. So I, I preferred, prefer hardwired stuff. Um, but there's, there's lots of options, and if your door can recognize something as MIDI, then it'll work with a Polychrome plugin. Well, it should do just fine, you know, there's, there's, there's guys on the, the Discord using all sorts of stuff, and uh, some of it's like, Wow, I, I never even thought of that, but uh, you guys are doing it. Um, anyway, so hopefully this 1.51 update will be out pretty damn soon. So I know a lot of you will be really excited for that. It's a really cool little update. And um, yeah, I think that's it for now. So have a great day. Thanks for uh, checking out this video and um, I'll see you back here real soon. All right, cheers, bye.